Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Kids World Home Edition. This week is such a great week. You know, the past couple of weeks, I've been going back to church for Sunday morning, and it's such a great feeling to be back in the Lord's house. Hopefully here shortly and soon, we'll be able to have regular Kids World again. But we still have a little bit ways to go before that happens. But if you look around and watch the news and kind of read a little bit, you know, Texas is kind of opening up slowly and hopefully it'll keep going at a good rate to where we'll be able to see each other again. So today's lesson is something that we all need. And this is this lesson is really special to me because it really shows that we can take things for granted. What that means is we expect. We just expect things to happen. And I know that you have experienced this because I have. And that's when your parents say, make sure to say please, thank you. Yes ma'am, no ma'am, yes sir, and no sir. It's really, really important to show these kinds of manners. Why is it so important to show these manners? Because the people who do help us, they don't have to help us. They do it because they want to. They do it because they love us. And how do we show our thankfulness towards them? Well, first of all, the simplest way is just to say thank you. But other ways is to be full and show full gratitude towards them. And not expect things to happen. Not expect things to come your way. In today's lesson, we're going to be reading a little bit about these men who did just that. In fact, there were ten men in this story. And what they all did except for one was they did not show gratitude. Only one came back. And we're going to read about that. We're not, we're not going to read about it, but we're going to learn about it. So this is what goes on in the story. There were ten men who had leprosy. Now, leprosy today is curable, okay? It's something that we don't see often because we have the technology and we have the medicine now in order to treat that kind of thing. Well, back then, they didn't have medicine or they didn't have treatments to take care of such a terrible, terrible disease. And so what happens when people had this way back when is people would throw them out of society. They would not be allowed into town. They actually were treated like garbage, okay? Because they didn't think of them as normal human beings. And we see that today. People treating other people as if they weren't human beings. And that's not right. Because we're here together and we've got to help each other out and love each other. And Jesus did just that for these men. You see, these men, when they saw Jesus, they knew exactly who he was. Because word, as you know, gets around pretty quick. And when Jesus came into town, they knew exactly who he was. But the rule was they couldn't get close to Jesus because they didn't want to infect him. They didn't want to be in his circle because in that culture, that was not allowed. So they cried out to him. Can you imagine that? These 10 men who had this terrible disease standing there and they see Jesus coming and they know that he can save them and they know that he can save them. And they yell, they're yelling out, Jesus, Jesus, help us, help us. And you know what Jesus does? He stops and he sees them. Now, there were rules that people had to follow. Just like today. When you go to the doctors, the doctor gives you a set of rules that you have to follow, and you follow the rules. You got to take the medicine every day. You got to do it this. You got to exercise once a week, whatever the rules are. Even after the hospital, after you have surgery or anything done, you got to sit down for six weeks to heal. You can't do much work. You can't lift. You can't do this or whatever. But there are rules. Well, back then, there were also rules. For things such as leprosy and healing and things like that. When, when, you, when they took certain medicines, they had, to le- they had to follow up with the priest. 
Now that's really interesting. They had to follow up with the pastor. So Jesus told the ten men, go to the priest. That was the rule. And what happened when they went and saw the priest or the pastor is he would slowly help them go back into society to help them out. We have programs like that today. The church still helps people today just like it did back then. Helping people get back on their feet, helping people be a part of society. We see that today. Well, that's what they did also back then. So Jesus sent them on their way. Now remember, they're lepers. They still have this disease. And Jesus is telling them to go see the priest. Now that doesn't make sense. Because first of all, they're, they're, they have leprosy. What does he mean to go to the priest? But you know what? They obeyed. They obeyed. So they went on their way to go see the priest. And as they're walking, it says that they were healed of their disease. They were healed of leprosy as they were walking to the priest. Now that is wild. Can you imagine you being really, really sick? Okay, having a fever, or maybe you have a broken leg, or maybe even worse. But you were just sick. And then the doctor says, hey... I need you to go to church. Okay? And you're like, what in the world? That doesn't make any sense. And the doctor says, trust God. Just trust God. It, it'll happen. Just go to church and trust God. Now, at first you would probably think that the doctor is crazy, right? Because, I mean, come on now. But then you do it. And then you see that you feel better and you're healed. What would be your first initial response? Would you thank God for what he did, what he did to heal you? Would you go back to the doctor and say, dude, look at this? Well, the men who were healed by Jesus, they didn't respond in a great way. They just kept walking. But one man, and what's wild about this one man is that he was Samaritan. Now remember from our last lesson, Samaritans and Jews did not get along. They were not friends. But this Samaritan turned and ran to Jesus when he saw that he was healed. And he laid down at his feet. And he started to worship and praise and thank Jesus over and over and over again. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, weren't there 10 of you? And now only one returns? Not only the one that returns, but he's a foreigner. He's a Samaritan. Can you imagine that? Now imagine how Jesus felt at that moment. Now I'm not saying that Jesus did, had less love for the others. Because that's not true. That's not true. Jesus loves everyone. But he does want to teach us lessons. And that lesson that he was trying to teach is gratitude. Be thankful. Come back and say thank you for what you've done. Or acknowledge the one who helped you. So this man comes back and praises Jesus and thanks him. And Jesus says, go ahead and stand up. And he goes, because of your faith, your sins are forgiven. And that was it. Jesus went on his way. So the moral of the story is this. Be sure to be thankful for all that we have. Because we do know who it comes from. We can't do anything in this world without Jesus and also with those around us. So when you need help with your homework, or your project, or whatever you're doing, and someone comes along and helps out, remember that they had to take time out of their day to help you out. And the best thing for us to do is to be thankful. 
Think about all the things that we have. I'm really thankful for the health that I have. I could be sick right now, but I'm not. I have my health. I might be stuck at home, but because of the technology we have nowadays, I have a way to communicate with my friends and family from all over. I'm so thankful for that. Sometimes when I'm really bored, I go outside and I sit in the back porch and I just listen to the wind blow and the birds chirp and I just listen to the trees blow in the wind. And I'm thankful for the earth that God made us, that we're allowed to sit and just enjoy our time. We might be going through some really rough times now in America, but I sit back and I still think, you know, we are still a free country. You and I, we can still do things we want to do. We can still see people we want to see. Not a lot of people can say that around the world. So I thank God for that. And the cool thing is, is when you're thankful, you're showing that other person thankfulness and gratitude for what they've done. So then they might do it again. And when they see the joy that it helps, the, the joy that it makes in you, They'll be like, man, that was great. I want to do it again. And then it gives an example for us because we see what they did for us. And then we go, I want to do that for somebody. And then before you know it, we could have the whole world loving others and helping others. But it all starts with thankfulness, gratitude. I love you guys. And I thank you for coming so much every week. I thank you for, for taking your time out of your week to come watch this video of me, Lord. Uh, well, I almost said Lord, uh, like I was in prayer. But I want to thank you for coming and watching this video, taking the time out of your day. And I really hope that soon we can see each other in person. Because when we do... Oh, Goodness, we're going to have so much fun, guys. I mean, I, I, I have a few games I want to try out with y'all and just to have worship time together and just sing and just see each other and laugh and, and just have a good time. I'm so excited. I love you guys. Bye.